explain some things that may still be a mystery to, to many folks. So uh, we're still talking about Black Lives Matter and we're talking about All Lives Matter. So those are things that we'll, we'll be talking about as we go through this video. So one of the problems with uh, the, the protests that are currently happening around uh, police brutality and, and, and some other things, uh, I, I like to, to kind of show some of the, the pitfalls so that we can avoid those pitfalls to actually get real change going. And so I am in support of peaceful protests. Uh, they just had one not too long ago at the Mall of America where uh, over 3,000 people showed up to demonstrate um, against police brutality and, uh, and all of the things that, that kind of uh, don't create the opportunity for social justice to, to, to occur. And we'll even talk about this concept of social justice and, and what is social justice. So, uh, so, so to, to even get to the, the, the protests, and because I think some of the focus has actually been taken away from what we really should be doing and has been uh, focused on what people are doing. And so to, to kind of explain that, we have to go, we have to take a step back and look at our governmental structure in the United States. So I'm going to do a basic U.S. government 101 class in the next, you know, two minutes or so. So, um, I hope you can follow me. So here we go. So there are three branches of government, right? So there's the legislative branch, there's the judicial branch, and there's the executive branch. Now the legislative branch, what they do is that they make laws, right? So they, the, they, they legislate laws. The, the, the people that we, we vote to, uh, to, to, to Congress and either a, a, as a senator or as a, um, as, as a congressman, th those folks make up the, the legislative branch. So they sit down and, and, and get bills and they, they decide what should become, which of those should become law, how that process goes. So, so the legislative branch makes the laws. The judicial branch, what they do is they actually interpret the laws. So the, um, so the judicial branch spends a lot of time looking at old case law, they look at old laws, they look at old statutes, and they try to determine what should be done given that statute. So when you go to the county, to the county courthouse, the, 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 the county judge is looking at laws and trying to determine if you've broken a law uh, or if you um, have operated outside of the law, what should happen to you. And if you haven't broken a law, they also determine what happens to you because you are a member or part of, of the U.S. government. Then there's the executive branch, and the executive branch just basically carries out the, 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 the mandates of these other two, right? So uh, they, the executive branch does what the law says, and the executive branch carries out whatever the, judici the judiciary says. So, so whatever the, the judges say, the executive branch executes that. Um, so the judicial branch for us is the Supreme Court, that's the highest court, and the executive office is that of the President of the United States. So the President um, carries out what the judicial branch says. The, the President's office also uh, executes or, or, or uh, does what the legislative branch says, right? So, um, so that's basically how the U.S. government kind of works. And so when we talk about police brutality, one of the things that I want to folks to, to really focus on is not the police themselves. Because uh, if an officer is dishonorably discharged from his duties, he no longer has the power that he did when he was a part of that, that organization, right? And so... Um, all too often what we're doing is we're, we're spending a lot of time focusing on either individual officers or individual um, incidences where officers are just carrying out their, their duties because they're a part of this executive branch, if you will. If you, if you look at city government or you look at county government, you'll see the same structure that there are those people. The county commissioners make the laws. There are judges in those counties that determine the laws, and there are sheriffs and police officers that execute what these two things say, right? So uh, legislators say where I can build a house, how big that house can be, what the zonings are for that house. 
Judges tell me if that is legal, if, if I can, if they can do that, if I can do that. So uh, I join in that process and the sheriff and the police carry out what the judges say and they carry out what the legislatures say. Right. So so the the, the police are a part of this kind of executive branch, which means that they only do what the law says they can do and what judges say is is legal. So part of the, the problem with a min, many of these protests is that we're spending a lot of time talking about individual officers when we should be talking about the policies that the officers are, are following. And so uh, a police officer can only operate within the, the boundaries of his or her responsibility given the policies and the procedures that are given by uh, the judiciary and the legislative branches. What is ever, whatever a city has legislated is, is legal and lawful is what they can do. If a city has not legislated that this is legal and lawful, then they can't do it. So um, I, I know a number of people are excited and, 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 and want to find someone to fight. But unfortunately, we're fighting, in many cases, the wrong situation, the wrong people, the wrong um, establishment. The, the, the executive branch only does what they're allowed to do given statutes, laws, and policies. And so if we actually want authentic and real change, we have to start talking with our policymakers. We start. We need to, to uh, go to where these policies are enacted and say, look, we want some change in these policies because they're not benefiting us. Uh, and, and when I say us, I mean those taxpayers who are paying the, uh, who support the U.S. government, whether it be a federal government, whether it be a, 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 a county government, whether it is a city government. It is the taxpayers' dollars that support that. And so instead of attacking, attacking the executive or, or the executive branch, the, the people who are carrying out the laws, we need to be targeting the, the legislatures. And the funny thing is, these folks... We'll sell out these folks so we don't have to talk to them, right? And so one of the things that, that we have to understand is that we have a system that we need to engage in because it is our system, right? It is our right to, to not be um, brutalized by people who use our tax dollars to, to, to do that. It is also important to, to know that... Um, Many communities have community policing programs that actually benefit and help people, right? And so I don't want us to get caught up in, in the sensationalism of, of, of all of these events because I will tell you that police officers are people too. and They have families just like um, you and I have, have families. And so they, they want the same things for those families and for themselves. Um, but we have to understand that there are policies and procedures that are oftentimes put in place that don't benefit the citizens. And so it is, a, it is the citizens' responsibilities to say, no, that's not okay. Did you know that you vote for your county sheriff? So if you don't like the, the policies that the sheriff is enacting, then you can do something about that. Um, did you know that the, uh, that the, the mayor and the, and the city officials are, are voted by you, and they help to hire and fire police, uh, police captains and, and police um, uh, executive officers, right? Police chiefs. So, so they have direct influence on them. So if we're not happy with the system that we're, we're given, if we, if we don't like stop and frisk, if we don't like um, the, 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 the profiling that often happens where people of color um, interact with the law in a more frequent way than, than other folks, if we don't like that, if we don't like how um, poor white kids get treated in, in many ways the same as, as other poor uh, kids of color, if we don't like that, if we don't like being followed around, if we don't like having all the cameras on the cars, if we don't like having stoplights that have uh, cameras on, on the, you know, that, that, that watch for people speeding through lights, if we don't like those things, then we need to talk to our legislators because not only do they tell these folks what to do, this executive branch, but they actually fund the executive branch. And so if we're not active, if we're not talking to folks, then we're, miss, we're missing the point. And we can blame the executive branch, we can blame the police all we want, but I will tell you that the police are only doing what the, what the policymakers allow them and fund them to do. If the policymakers defund a number of these activities, don't allow them to, to, to get cars with, with cameras that, that, that um, 
that take pictures, and, I mean, all this kind of stuff. The, the legislature is the place where we make that change. And until we make that change, until we start dealing with our legislature, we can yell and be mad at these people all we want, but it is actually the, 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 the policymakers that can actually make real and authentic change. And if you're ready to do it, I'll see you at a capital somewhere. This is Andre, and I'll see you soon.